Hello and welcome back to Sabir CAD. This tutorial video deals with basic commands in two-dimensional drafting in AutoCAD. Let's see the easiest method to create this figure. We will start by creating a square with a dimension of 100 units by 100 units. So I'll click on the rectangle command. I'll click the first corner over here. Then I'll go to dimension option. Now I'm asked to specify the length of the rectangle. I'll give it as 100. Then width is also 100 units. Then I'm asked to pick the opposite corner point. I'll just make a click here. Now I'll just double tap the scroll wheel of the mouse to bring the entire object within the screen. Now I'll zoom out a bit. I'll create this arc by creating a circle first and I'll perform trim command to get an arc from the circle. Now the radius of the arc is given as 30 and 30 radius TYP. TYP stands for typical. That means an arc with the same radius is used at more than one places in this drawing. So I'll go to circle command and I'll choose center radius method and I'll pick this point as a center point of the circle. Now when I'm asked to give the radius, I'll type 30. Next, I'll create the circle. The diameter of that circle is given as 74 units. So I'll go to circle command and I'll choose center diameter method. When I'm asked to give the center point of the circle, I'll hold on the shift key and press the right button of the mouse simultaneously and I'll choose geometric center and I'll keep the cursor on this square and it has captured the geometric center. Next I'm asked to specify the diameter, I'll give 74. So the circle is drawn. Next I'll create the small circle and the diameter of that circle is given as 12 units. So I'll again click on center diameter method of circle command. When I'm asked to choose a center point, this time I'll hold on the shift key and press the right button of the mouse simultaneously and I'll choose quadrant because that circle has to be exactly on the quadrant point of the big circle. Now I'm asked to specify the diameter, I'll type 12. Next I'll draw this inclined line. In the figure it's given that the angle made by the inclined line with the horizontal is 45 degrees. So I'll click on line command and I'll start from this center point then I'll activate the polar tracking. The polar tracking as you know will let the cursor move at a regular angular increments. Now I'll just click on this and I'll choose 4590 since it's already set here I don't have to do anything all I have to do is just activate this polar tracking and when you move the mouse it moves at each 45 degree angular increments it snaps at a point. Now you can just click a point over here and give an enter. So this is the inclined line. Next you have to offset this inclined line through a distance of 7 units and that's also typical. That means it's applicable to all the inclined lines in this drawing. So I'll click on offset command. When I'm asked to give the offset distance, I'll type 7. Select object to offset, side to offset, select object to offset and side to offset and give an enter. Now you can erase the center line since it is no longer required. Next I'll perform array command to get multiple copies of these objects at four different places in this drawing. So I'll give array classic command. So when you type array you will get all the commands which starts with array and I'll choose array classic from here. Now I'll choose polar array and uh, center point of the array is center point of the circle A number of items is already set as four. Now you can select the objects to be arrayed which is the circle and these lines as well as the circle. Now give an enter and you can preview the array. This is how the array is gonna come. Now just give enter once again and give OK to accept this array. Next I'll perform trim command to remove all the unwanted portions of the objects. So I'll click on trim. When I'm asked to select the objects, just give an enter. Now you are asked to select the object to trim. So I'll click on the fence option and you select the fence lines in such a way that it passes through all the required objects to be trimmed. Now give an enter. Again fence option. I'll select all these objects to be trimmed. Again fence. Give an enter. Fence. Enter. Once again fence. Enter. Hence I have completed the trim. Next I'll copy the circle onto the center of this figure. So I'll give copy. Select the circle, this is the base point and this particular center point is the second point. Next I'll draw two axis lines. One is horizontal, another one is vertical. So I'll go to line command. 
and I'll track this point. Okay, you can press F11 function key if the tracking is not on. Then I'll make a pick here. Now I'll pick a point over here. Now give enter. Now the vertical axis, I'll just track this point and I'll pick a point over here, then straight down another point. Next, I'll change the line tip of the axis lines as well as this particular circle into center. For that, I'll go to properties, then I'll click on the line tape pop up. Now, only the continuous line tape is loaded, so I'll click on other, then click on load. I'll load center to line tape and just give OK. Next, I'll select the lines as well as the circle. Then I'll go to properties and I'll change the line type to center to. Now you can see that the line type is changed, but to get a proper scale, I must change the line type scale factor. So I'll give LTS command with which you can stretch and compress a line type. LTS stands for line type scale and I'll give a higher value. Let it be say 15. Now you can see that the line tape scale is changed. Hence, I have completed this figure. So that's all for now. Until I catch you in the next video with another interesting topic. Bye bye and take care. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already and hit the like button of this video if you liked it.